House Leader, Third Party. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, my colleague asked the government uh, who stopped the development of species at risk legislation. The environment minister stood and blamed First Nations. But that was 2018. Yeah, groan if you want. That's what he said. 2018 was when that uh, legislation. Members, members. I did. That was before the Declaration Act, and that was also before Section 3 and the interim approach. The minister knows, and the minister knows that I know, that First Nations are not the reason that this government is not protecting species at risk or biodiversity. It was terrible and infuriating to sit in this place yesterday, Mr. Speaker, and hear First Nations be the scapegoat for this government's inactions. While this BC NDP government talks, trees die. While they promise a new policy, trees die because of the agreements made under the old policy. The old agreements paid First Nations for dead trees, Mr. Speaker. Now the province is proposing to defer logging on 2.6 million hectares, and once again, the agreements that they have in place with First Nations under the old policy is being blamed for the inability to defer the death of these critical forests. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Premier. Are these forests doomed to the death economics and scapegoating of this colonial institution, or will he provide immediate funding for First Nations to defer old growth logging in their territories? Minister of Forests. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. British Columbians care very deeply about our forests and the many social, environmental, and cultural benefits they provide. Forestry is the foundation of British Columbia's economy. To deal specifically with, uh, with the question that the member has raised, um, indeed, uh, following the Merkel uh, as McSorley report, The Future of Forests in British Columbia, we have embarked as a government upon a process of deferral of old growth. Uh, that process is a very inclusive one, it includes uh, every First Nation, uh, the responses from various First Nations have been different, uh, but nonetheless, they are all included in that process. Uh, so far, uh, 2.1 million hectares has been deferred. Uh, we've made a commitment uh, recently to uh, establish what are called forest landscape tables, where in the past the, the uh, the uh, companies would provide a logging plan. This process will include uh, First Nations, communities, uh, companies, uh, unions, uh, and uh, develop uh, an enduring uh, plan that will have community support and provide a new path forward for forestry in British Columbia. House Leader Third Party Supplemental. I'm glad the Minister states that uh, his government is working with all First Nations. This should be a fairly easy question for the Premier to answer. Yesterday, I sat in the Mungo Martin Big House uh, with uh, my main uh, Sewitsu uh, hereditary chiefs, Wallace uh, Namuguis, uh, David uh, Mungo Knox, the uh, head chief of the Kokutal, and uh, Mum Tagila chief, Makwala, uh, Randy Cook, Tom Child, and others around the fire, Mr. Speaker. Those chiefs carry the powerful names of their ancestors, uh, the names that they were looked after and honoured in a good way. These are the leaders this government has always overlooked and ignored, Mr. Speaker, and that continues. The provincial and federal governments are willfully undermining and eroding the governance structures that have existed on this landscape since time immemorial and elevating people who will, frankly, Mr. Speaker, sign their agreements. This government promises to protect old growth. But they are clear cutting the territory that the chiefs of the Kwakutl and the Mumtagila must protect. The chiefs have sent multiple letters to the former Premier, the former Ministers of Forests, and now the new Premier seeking to meet in a good way at the fire to discuss the sacred responsibility that their ancestors left for them. Mr. Speaker, my question is through you to the Premier. Will he sit with the chiefs as they have requested? <laughs> Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member for, for the question. Our government has concluded that we must work with First Nations, and whether that leadership is hereditary, elected, or 
fused. We will work on the ground with them to meet their needs, both in forestry and other areas. Mr. Speaker, since the Declaration Act was enacted, that Indigenous governing body we take from the nations themselves and work in consultation and cooperation with those nations on issues such as the one that my colleague has, has raised. 